Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome to another week in my teacher life video. If this is your first time here, my name's Tressa and I'm a fifth grade teacher in Alberta, Canada. I make lots of teaching and learning videos here on YouTube and I would love to have you consider subscribing and following along. Good morning, everyone. Happy Monday. We are back in the classroom and I thought it would take you along with me this week once again. I have been really liking week in my life vlogs lately. They just kind of are the best fit for my crazy schedule at this time of the year. Anyway, this is actually another four day week, but we have Monday through Thursday. So we have Friday off. In my district, we get to choose um, we have like two options so we can add an extra day to the May long weekend and have a four day weekend or we can take this weekend and have two three day weekends. So my dis my school always chooses the two three day weekends, which I absolutely love. So we'll actually have like a full three day weekend, like no PD teachers don't have to come to school at all. So that is lovely. I'm really looking forward to that. Anyway, today is orange shirt day and it is not like an official orange shirt day, but especially if you're Canadian, you obviously have seen in the news that um, the bodies of 215 children who had attended a residential school were found near Kamloops, BC recently. So um, kind of all across Canada, there is an honorary orange shirt day in memory of those lives that were lost. And I think it's really important because unfortunately like they found this one mass grave but we know that there are so many more across Canada and it's just horrible. So that's actually how I'm going to start my day with my students. Um, I know they're going to be wondering why we're having an orange shirt day because we typically have this at the end of September. That's like the official orange shirt day of the year and we talk about um, all of this stuff on that day and they usually decorate an orange shirt and we hang it up on the bulletin board and all that stuff. I actually think um, I have a vlog when we went through orange shirt day in September. But anyway, I want to start my day and just talk about this situation with my students. Um, I love that in grade five, in our current social studies curriculum, we have a whole unit on first peoples and indigenous peoples. And so we actually do talk about residential schools like as part of the curriculum. So it's not really an add on for us. Like it's very much part of the curriculum, something that my students are meant to learn about at this age. So um, I think we're going to do that as kind of like a language arts, social studies, and just you know, like life kind of lesson this morning. And again, like if you're not new, you know that I always talk about how good my class is with like discussion and like real life stuff. Something that I did notice on the weekend, like on all of my social media platforms, all of this stuff was being shared, which is wonderful because you really want the media surrounding it because, you know, that's the best way to get the word out about stuff that's going on that was wrong. <laughs> anyway, one of the things that I did notice was that in some of the teacher groups that I'm a part of, specifically like here in Alberta or in Canada, a lot of teachers were commenting like, oh, are you gonna be talking about this with your kids tomorrow? And then some other people were asking like how to do it. And I think honestly, the best way to answer that question is just to go for it. Like you, you have to talk about it and you have to be willing to go for it and do the best you can because education is key and I definitely always make sure that I'm educated before I talk to my students about it because I mean that was something else that you see across social media is that people are misinformed or have the wrong information and then are sharing that so it's really important to get educated yourself first but then the next step is to educate your children whether you're a parent or a teacher and I just feel our role is so important in that. And I always try to talk about current events with my kids and I a hundred percent don't do it the best way possible. I know like I do it the best way that I can. And that's just to go for it, take a risk. Um, I always am willing to tell my students when I don't know something and I try to look it up and I try to learn. Um, sometimes we'll get my computer out together and we'll Google something for more information. And then we talk about like sources and making sure that we're finding the best information available to us. But honestly, like some of those questions I totally get because it is hard. Like, should I talk about it and where do I start? but you have to talk about it. And the best thing you do is start. And 
of course, educate yourself first because it's so important to be passing on the right information, but you have to do it. That is 100% a major part of our role as a teacher and as an educator. And my best advice is to like go for it and, and take that risk and make sure that you're talking to your kids about real things. Anyway, <laughs> that is probably a little bit heavy for this Monday morning, but it's real life. So here we are. Um, that is how we're going to start our day. I've got a couple of IPP meetings sprinkled throughout the day, which is always a little bit frustrating because you just get pulled out at like random times and it's not even like a part of the schedule. But um, I'm lucky because I only have two IPPs this year and I get them both done today. So um, it'll be fine. <laughs> and I teach grade one health today. My kids have French today. There's like a lot going on and it's just a Monday and it's the end of the month. So like with tomorrow being June 1st and everything, oh, like, oh my gosh. Anyway, I'm ready. I'm, I'm actually surprised that I'm in a pretty good mood this morning because I think I only got like four to five hours of sleep last night. And so I was ready to just have a horrible day, but trying my best I know that last week's vlog, I kind of closed out on like a sour note. And even like, if you watched it, you'll know it's because our mask craft didn't go very well and the masks were sitting back there. And so I walked in and was just instantly like, oh my gosh, not those again. So anyway, I'm not starting this week how I ended the last one. So we're just gonna dive right in and I will take you along on our adventures throughout the week. And I hope you'll stick around and follow along. Hi everyone, it's the end of the day. I just thought I would check in with you because I actually have time to. I feel like most days I only have like a few minutes to film, but today I'm actually good. Um, okay, so really busy day. Um, I definitely had like a little bit of like a mental breakdown at one point today. It was like 25 degrees in my classroom and I'm the type of person that like I would 100% choose cold over hot. When I get too hot, I am like the most irritable person on the planet. Anyway, it was 25 degrees. I was so hot and I just do not like that feeling of standing in front of a crowd like your class and just sweating. So I started getting like really irritable. I had to run to like an IPP meeting in the middle of it. I came back. It was so hot. Anyway, I found out um, one of our, well, like our maintenance crew was in the hallway and he came into my classroom and they were like tinkering with some things. And then he was like, do you feel like air is flowing in here? And I was like, I don't understand. And he said, well, something happened with the furnace. He told me, but I didn't understand the concept, unfortunately. But he told me that um, something had gone wrong with the furnace and we weren't having any air circulating in our classroom. Oh, so like this morning I had the door closed, the windows closed. And then when the kids out for, went out for recess, I was like, oh my gosh, I gotta get these windows open. So we just had stale air in my classroom and I completely just didn't know anything was wrong. So it immediately dropped to like three degrees and was like bearable. It absolutely gets hot in my classroom, but that was like unbearable. So I had to like apologize to my kids. I was like, I'm so sorry, you guys. Like that just really stressed me out. I was way too hot. I was trying to give instructions on something that was complicated. Anyway, I told them like for, I was like, okay, I just need no one to talk to me for a minute. I just need a second. <sighs> Anyway, I do try to do that. Like I try to explain when I'm going through something that's frustrating me or I try to ask for the time that I need versus just taking it out on my kids. I obviously get angry, I am human, but when I can explain to them like why I'm frustrated or what I'm going through, I do try to, um, just to teach them those skills and like model those skills. Anyway, I thought I would share something with you that we did in math. I know I have some fellow grade five teachers out there following along, um, or if you work with area and perimeter in any capacity, um, I do this project every year and it's nothing fancy. I didn't invent it or anything, but I do do this project. So um, I made a T just as an example, because my name starts with a T, but I give the kids a grid paper and then they just have to make um, every letter of their first name. And then we actually end up solving the area and perimeter of their name. So where this gets a little bit complicated is that at least the way that I teach it, I try, I tell them like, we don't want to use any half squares and we don't want any like diagonal lines or curved lines. So you have to make sure that, and the letter T is not the best example because it's really simple, but um, letter R for example, or I know I had a student who was having trouble with a K. Some of those letters that have like a lot of like diagonal lines or curved lines can be a little bit challenging. So they had to figure out um, how to make the letter like make sense and be very evident. Um, we were talking about like, it can be challenging to differentiate between an uppercase A and an uppercase D when they're like rectangular. So we went over some ways to um, differentiate between the two. 
I also said that they could choose whether they did uppercase letters or lowercase letters, depending on what would be easier for their name. So they um, draw them on the grid paper, they cut them out, and then they color each letter and just glue it on a black background so it like stands out. And I always give them the grid paper so that like they're not using a ruler, they're actually measuring like using the squares along the top. These are centimeter squares, so technically you could use a ruler, there's no reason why you couldn't. Um, but just to make sure we end up with like whole numbers, this is how I do it. And then tomorrow I'll give them a little square that says area and perimeter for each of their letters and then total for their whole name. So that will be kind of an extension into tomorrow. Actually, like most of what we did today goes into tomorrow. Like I said, it is orange shirt day. So we talked a lot about residential schools actually like for a whole hour this afternoon. Sometimes like I am definitely the type of teacher like I let my kids keep talking if we're having a really good discussion and sometimes like I feel like I need to know better when to wrap up a discussion and like move on to the activity. Um, it was fine today because it was really good discussion, but I do notice like that's one of the weaknesses in my teaching for sure is that sometimes I just let discussions go on forever and let everyone say what they want to say and everyone ask what they want to ask. And I know some teachers are really talented at knowing like the right moment to cut off a discussion and move on, but that is not something that I'm really good at. It's definitely something that um, I strive to improve on. Anyway, it definitely like, I have a really good discussion class, so it's hard to cut them off when we're having like really thorough, deep discussions and they're asking questions and we are researching information, but sometimes I feel like I don't get enough done in the run of a day. Anyway, I'm feeling definitely like a huge weight has been lifted because I'm done of IPPs, I'm done of my benchmarks, I'm done of my growth plan, like all of these things that are getting off of my plate. So it's really just like report cards that are left um, our district is handing out some of our like contracts and things like that this week. So that is just really stressful. I work in a really like transient community. So there's a lot of changes that happen every year, but also within our district, a lot of changes happen. And so you just never know if you're like stable where you're at. I'm really curious if you're a teacher, is your district similar? Um, because I know like the school district that I grew up in, it was like you knew who the grade one teacher was and who the grade two teacher was and who the grade six teacher was. And it didn't change very much. Like I found it to be very strange if the grade six teacher became the grade four teacher because you knew that that was actually the grade six teacher and we had like two or three um classes in every grade i think there was three in every grade but you knew who the teachers were for that grade and it was strange if they started teaching another grade but now that i'm a teacher i see how often that happens so i'm really curious if you're a teacher comment below what is your district like are there a lot of changes at this time of year is it very like unknown where you're gonna be in future years or are you pretty like stable with where you're at I personally love grade five. I am exactly where I want to be right now. And I have always said, this is my first year getting to be a third year teacher of a grade. So this is my fifth year of teaching. I taught grade one my first two years, and this is my third year in grade five. And I honestly, now that I've taught in a grade for three years, I really think that third year is like key to really getting to know the curriculum and getting to become like a good teacher at that grade. Like I never really felt like I got to that in grade one. So I would be so sad if that was taken from me now. So <sighs> there's just like a lot of anxiety at this time of year and just hearing from other people like that they're getting calls and emails. So anyway, <laughs> I knew it was coming, but it's nerve wracking and I'm just praying that I do not get any contact. I just get to stay where I'm at for one more year at least. <laughs> anyway, I am going to head home. Like I said, the pressure's off a little bit for this week. Report cards are definitely coming up soon, but I'm not um, too worried about them right now. So a couple things that I need to do to get ready for tomorrow, but not too much on my plate. So I will absolutely check in with you when I have something interesting to share tomorrow. Good morning, everyone. Today's a Wednesday. So we're skipping forward one day, but I thought I would have some more time today to actually catch you up on what we did yesterday because a lot of what we did yesterday was like the beginning of some projects and activities that we will be working on. So I thought it would be kind of silly to show you just the beginning when I could wait a couple of days and actually show you the final product. So we had a really good day together yesterday. Um, it was, I think, 30 degrees here, <laughs> but I actually had one of my students purchase or two of my students actually as a pair purchase an extra gym 
So we started the day with some math and it was actually really, really cool. I wanted to share that with you. We started the day with some math and what I did was I put um, all problems on the board of like pretty much almost everything we've learned this year with the exception of place value. So there was like addition of decimals, subtraction of decimals, um, multiplying two digit numbers, long division, three digit by one digit, algebra, um, solving for area and perimeter of an irregular shape. And so it was really cool because it's a lot of stuff that we've been working on recently, but it does go back to our work with decimals. So by no means was it like everything we learned this year, but it was really cool. So then the kids worked on that for their morning math. And then I said, okay, as we're solving them, let's solve them in order of what we believe to be the easiest to the hardest. So we started with addition, then we went to subtraction, then um, they decided multiplication, then division, then algebra, then area and perimeter. Um, they did say like perimeter is easier to solve than area, but it was like a dual question. Like they had to solve for area and perimeter of a shape. So we did both at the same time and then the also the algebra problem wasn't too difficult and they were like some students were like no the algebra one could have been like number three so it was just like an interesting conversation anyway every year i do try to think of like some different things that will help us to like recap our learning from the year so that was just you know it wasn't a big deal but it was kind of cool and i was talking to the kids about how impressed i was by how many hands went up to be the person to go up to the board and solve the problem so in my class when students go up to the board to solve the problem they have to do it in like a teaching way so they have to explain the steps and their thinking and the logic behind what they're doing so it isn't just go up to the board do the work come and sit down um see if you have the right answer it is go up to the board and solve the problems talking through your thinking in front of the class so i think that that's an added challenge um i know personally me teaching is how i figure out if i know something well enough like if i really can't teach it to my kids or to someone else then i need to spend some more time researching it or learning it so i feel like that works really well for the kids as well if they can't teach it to others they probably need a little bit of more practice with it Anyway, after that, I gave them the extra gym period because we actually have gym today and we have gym tomorrow and the students bought it for this week. So I thought yesterday would be the day to use that. So we went outside and we actually have like two kind of baseball diamond shaped things on our playground. We have a really good playground at my school. So it's kind of just outside our windows, but there's a big baseball diamond. So we brought the bases out and um, soccer ball and we played soccer baseball. I believe in the States that's called kickball or maybe not even in the States, but I call it soccer baseball. I grew up calling it soccer baseball. So that's what I call it with my kids. Anyway, we did have a really good day. Um, I finally got around to an art project. We had been talking and I know I shared this with you, but we had been talking about residential schools and the 215 children who were found in Kamloops and um, really diving into the history of that because it's part of our social studies. But I also wanted to do something to like honor those children and I talked about with my students, we have talked about trauma and we talked about how in a lot of cases, surviving it was just as awful as dying from it. And we talked about a lot of the issues and mental, mental illnesses that survivors would deal with today who attended those residential schools. So instead of saying this craft is only meant to be in memory of those 215 children who have recently been found, um, we decided to do it in memory of all of the people who attended residential schools. So like I said, um, I do wanna show you that craft because it is beautiful. My students did a great job, but I don't have too many that are totally done. So I'm gonna wait until either later today or tomorrow to share that with you, but it's beautiful. And we actually did in like a kind of subtle way, honor the 215 children by having 215 items that we're going to be putting up on our art bulletin board. So I absolutely will share that with you. Um, just not right now. <laughs> I need to give them some more time to work on it, whether that be today or tomorrow. And really good news. I started my reading testing yesterday. Oh my gosh. I don't know if you're like me, but at my school, we do Fountas and Pinnell and we do it two times a year. So in the beginning of the year and the end of the year. And then of course you can do it any other time that you want, but I'm not sure why you would really choose to do it at any other time. I understand the value of it, but it just takes so long, definitely like 10 to 15 minutes per student. And 
then it's like really you know figuring out the right book as well which i will say like definitely comes with experience like i'm much better now at picking the right level for students than i was in my early years of teaching anyway i only got two tests done but i do that like countdown in my head so i'm like okay two are done 21 to go <laughs> so anything's better than nothing at this point and i'm looking i have a couple things that are like starting to fall down in my classroom does that happen to you at the end of the school year i had to put a lot of stuff up with command strips this year because my classroom was freshly painted last summer so we weren't supposed to put anything up on the walls that would like leave a mark which is silly but anyway so i had to put things up with command strips and I had to use those poster strips but like a million of them i probably spent like 40 dollars on command strips just to hang up resources in my classroom <sighs> anyway stuff is starting to fall down which makes me really think it's the end of the year and i'm just gonna leave it and let it fall <laughs> or let it start to hang but it is what it is anyway i have to take it all down at the end of the year anyway and start fresh next year so um yeah, I don't really have very much to share with you beyond that. I feel like I gave you a good recap of our day yesterday and we're just gonna take on today. And I do have a staff meeting after school um, and a pretty busy day in terms of like supervision and stuff. But I think I should be able to check in with you after school if not before then. And um, hopefully I can show you actually like some samples of work and also let you know what we were up to today. Hi everyone, it is about 4.30. I just got out of my staff meeting and we've obviously had a really crazy day, but I did do something that I wanted to share with you. So I'll try to keep this pretty quick, but this is one of my favorite teaching tools that I use all the time. I learned it um, from a presentation of a specialist in graphic organizers who came to my district and a lot of the teachers in my school use it as an organizer. So this is actually called a ranking ladder. And if you've never heard of it before, it is a teaching strategy used to obviously rank items. So it's totally something that you can do across subject levels. Um, and I have done it in numerous subject areas, but this is an activity that I do almost every year. I have every year that I've taught grade five. So I often have my students actually make like their ladder out of construction paper. You obviously don't have to do that. They could draw a ranking ladder. You could pass them one that has been printed from the internet. Um, I just have them make one um, kind of just for fun, to be honest. And it's just to give it more of that ladder look, I guess. And if you have the time and I just happen to have the time today. So we actually used it in our social studies lesson today where we were talking about confederation. So we've been talking a lot about kind of like the pros and cons. So pretending we were in 1864 and we were attending the Charlottetown Conference or the Quebec Conference and trying to be a part of the decision as to whether or not there should be a Canada, like the country of Canada. So I gave them six reasons um, about Confederation. So why it should happen, why it shouldn't happen. Some of like the main arguments that would have been brought up at some of those conferences and by some of the colonies. So what I did, it, these are six reasons that we have already talked about previously. So this wasn't new information, um, but I gave them the reasons on a piece of paper and they just had to cut them into these strips, just tiny little paragraphs or a couple sentences. And then we always talk in my class about the top of the letter being the most important. You can obviously reverse it and do it the other way. I don't know if there's an official way, but I always think like the top of the letter is the most important if we're talking about like a hierarchy or something. So um, they have to rank them most important to least important. And so all of my students built their ladder. And then what I did was I didn't have them glue their strips on right away. I just had them place them on the ladder. So we did what's called a ghost walk. So all they did was they walked around the classroom. They stopped at classmates' desks. It took a look at their ranking ladder to see how they had ranked the items. And then they were able to go back to their own desk. And I gave them about 30 seconds. And I said, okay, now you need to move any around that you want to. A lot of my students did end up moving some of them around based on what they saw. And it's almost like a little bit of a way of like cheating just in case someone was confused or didn't really understand the task. That way they got to look at a couple others before I tell them they have to lock them in. So locking them in is just gluing them onto the actual rungs of the ladder. So once they have their answers locked in, then you can do whatever kind of follow-up activity you want. We did um, a tally up on the board of the most important and the least important, and we actually did find some similarities. So a lot 
um, we actually then went back and did the second as well. So the most important and the second most important. And we actually found that 19 students out of the 23 in my class all deemed leadership to be the most important um, either in first or second place. So you can like find some data from looking at it that way. I have also done this, um, like I said, in numerous subjects, but another one that is really easy to bring into your classroom is if you are doing a novel study or a read aloud of a novel in your classroom, um, going back and looking at the major points of the plot and ranking those based off importance is another really cool way to use a ranking ladder. Um, but they are like completely cross curricular, like you can use ranking ladders in any subject. <laughs> so I just thought I would share that because they went really well today and it is one of my favorite strategies and I think it's pretty like a simple concept. It's not hard for kids to understand. Anyway, you guys, it is literally 28 degrees inside my classroom <laughs> and I am just not someone who likes the heat. You're probably like, Tressa, stop talking about the temperature, but whew, it is hot. So I am going to get my window shut. I'm going to pack up for the evening and I'm going to head home. So I will definitely chat with you tomorrow. Tomorrow's Thursday, but it is our final day of the week because we have a three day weekend. So I'll chat with you tomorrow. Um, hopefully art projects will be done. I'm looking at them right now. We have seven of them up, but I really wanna show you like the final product. So I don't wanna share those with you just yet, but I will try to tomorrow. Hi everyone, it is now officially the weekend. It's the end of the day on Thursday. Oh my gosh, today was such just a hot day. I know I've been talking a lot about how hot it is, but it is hot. We actually had a presenter, um, a presenter called Big Daddy Tads presented to our school on mental health this afternoon. So it was just hot just sitting here, just sweating watching him. Anyway, it was a good kind of calm way to end our day. We had kind of just a catch up day today. Um, I gave lots of time to catch up on some of the activities that we had done throughout the week. So that was really nice to get done. Um, I'm gonna still need to have a couple catch up days or like catch up blocks next week because we do still have a lot. Like I feel like I just took on perhaps too much or I don't know, maybe the right amount, just not with the right amount of time this week. So it's kind of like the end of the year is like that anyway. There's a lot of catch up work, finishing up projects, tying up some loose ends. Um, I think we have like four tests next week. I did send my kids home with their June calendar yesterday. So June calendar and newsletter are out our last one of the year. And my kids had seen that the last day of school is on there. Ours is on June 25th. They were like, no, we refuse to go to grade six. Oh my gosh. Anyway, it's kind of fun to look at all the fun things that we still have planned. Normally the end of the school year is a bit more exciting. Like we have um, some field trips and I know like the grade six is usually set up like a field day for us and things like that. And we can't do that this year. But it is what it is, and that's okay. Um, I do just quickly want to show you their art projects. Not everyone was done, but this is what they look like. So the ones that are done are up there. It was kind of like a wreath, and they had to put feathers along the outside, and then the inside was a circle. And both of those are very um, important symbols in Indigenous cultures, so that's kind of why we decided to use those. And they were allowed to put anything on the feathers that represented um, apologizing, um, grieving, offering hope to any people who attended um, those residential schools. So we didn't say specifically survivors, we didn't say specifically the 215 children who passed, we just said anyone who attended these schools. Anyway, when they are all done, um, we will have 215 feathers up there. So we did want to honor the 215 lives that had been lost um, of the children who were found just this past week. So we did that in that way with the feathers and there's 215 feathers. So they're not all done and I kind of wanted to show you all of them, but anyway, it worked out. <laughs> I wanted to just give you a quick glimpse anyway. All right, well, I am reading, it literally says 29 degrees on my like inside the classroom. I don't know what that's called, a thermometer. I don't know you guys, anyway, I'm dying. So I'm gonna shut my windows, turn the fan off and head home for a long weekend. We get three days off. So um, I will probably film again next week. I thought maybe I would check in with just a day in the life of a teacher next week because I know I've been filming lots of weeks and sometimes I'll just tackle a day. But I do also like doing these, so I'm not sure 
anyway, stay tuned. I will have a couple more videos coming up of our last three weeks of school. So make sure you are subscribed if you are not already. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this week's video, please give it a thumbs up and I will see you in my next one. Thank you.